it was when it was when they were much younger. Um, they had been dating for a while, and uh, Dylan actually arranged this whole this whole elaborate uh, surprise for Irene. For I think it was their anniversary or something. And uh, basically, he he uh, left her a note one day saying, uh, "We're going to play a game today." And it's called 100 Kisses. And so she, he's, he, the note just said, just go through your day. You'll see what I mean. So okay. he, she went, she went to work and one of her coworkers came to her and he had a, he had a plastic bag with some of those uh, chocolate kisses in them. And Aww. he asked her a question. He said, where, where did you and Dylan first meet? And so Irene gave the answer and he gave her the bag and said, inside the bag, there were the kisses and another note saying where the next question was. And it was like a big scavenger hunt. Oh, that's so cute. So cute. And creative. It's very creative. And at the end, at the end of the day, uh, the last note said, meet me at the place where we had our first date. And oh. Dylan, Dylan uh, came to her and he said, today you found 99 kisses and I have the last one, but a answer my question first. And she said, okay, what's the question? And well, he got down on one knee and said, will you marry me? And... Oh, that is... <laughs> Such an amazing story. Wow. Yeah. And I, you know, teenage, teenage Molly rolled her eyes so hard the first time she heard it, but eventually it actually became my favorite story. And I asked them to tell me many times. Oh, oh that, I, I love proposal stories. <laughs> yeah, they're certainly interesting. Mm -hmm. Molly, Molly gives Noir a look, and she 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 doesn't she doesn't say anything, but she realizes, oh, uh, this is probably a touchy subject. Yeah, I've got the post it once, um, a long time ago, but yeah, that oh. kind of reminds me. Of, um, it was kind of funny actually. <laughs> We went around and like asked each other's fathers for permission and we had no idea that we asked each other's fathers. It was a, we both had Brit like date ideas and we were like, oh, I'm going to go to this as a surprise, um, to this location. And I was like, oh no, I need to change my plan. And then Cam had to change theirs and oh, <laughs> we were running around like headless chicken and by the end, like we're both going, oh no, I was going to propose to you, but are you breaking up with me? Is this still what was happening? And then, <laughs> turns out we were both trying to propose to each other. It was, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was silly, but, but <laughs> yeah. I haven't thought about that in a while. <clears throat> so where is your fiance now? broke up there was a family issue turns out that oh. that's not a good person oh i'm so sorry and it's a long time ago well cheer up noir you're still young i'm sure that you have plenty of time for that in the future yeah yeah thanks Well, the service, the service was really nice. Um, what do you think? What do you think, Elise? You, you want to get some, get some lunch? Oh, I would love to have some lunch. Sure. Where did you want to go? Did you want us to escort you back to the cafe? Maybe we can just grab something over at Noir's. Yeah, I can probably make you guys something if you want. I'm going back to work anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Noir, it's very good to see you here again. You'll hear the voice of Sister Chancenera. Ah, Sister um, Chancenera. Um, may news blessings smile upon me. 
May Muse Blessing smile upon you as well. How is Remy doing? Oh, he's a lot better. Thank you so much for helping out. I hope it's enough. I'm not really sure. Oh, thank the gods. I am so glad to hear that. Well, as we said, if there's anything else that we can do for you and Remy, just let us know. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Happy All Hallows Eve, then. Happy All Hallows Eve. And she will... If there's nothing else, she will go off and talk to some other people in the congregation. So. Molly will look at Nora and she, she'll say, Oh, um, was she the one who helped Remy get over uh, whatever was happening with him? Y yeah, her and a few other sisters. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. So that, that actually helped uh, Remy get into the dream world with us, right? Oh, yeah, it, I guess he received a blessing. Um, I don't know which thing caused him to go to the dream world, but I think the library ritual idea is a bit much to start off with. Uh, Although, yeah, maybe. Um, hmm. Well, and she'll, she'll actually take out her ball and she'll let Bullet out. <clears throat> Just out into the temple? Are they still in the temple? <laughs> They're still in the temple. <laughs> so okay, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Just say, hey, bullet. Um, so, what do you think about maybe getting a blessing? <laughs> well, he was already greeting her with a grin and looking around, but at the mention of that, you know, he seems into the idea. Like a sort of a sort of casual shrug of his wings, but you know, his grin grows and he gives a quick nod, so Well, it's worth a shot, right? <clears throat> and she she turns back to Alicia and Noir and says, I, I don't really know how this works. Um, do you just ask someone or <laughs> Oh yes. Uh, doctor she says, if uh if you wish to ask for a blessing, you can just simply go to one of the sisters, and I'm sure they would all be happy to oblige. Cool. Bullet will quickly fly off after one, then. Uh, the bullet. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I need to. I need to go after him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll. I'll keep an eye on Doctor Petal. Make okay. sure she doesn't run off. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she. She's not like Chase. Come on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forget people just don't run off normally. I, I hang around too many people, gosh, like that. Uh, you can catch up to Bullet to stop him before he completely attacks this poor sister who right now is uh, seems to be uh, talking to uh, a couple parents of some sort. And it looks like they're having a very serious conversation about something. Mm. So. <clears throat> yeah, she'll... Uh... Molly will, will kind of give a whistle to Bullet, kind of beckoning him back. Yeah, he'll perk up, stop, and at the back end, fly <laughs> back toward her. She she rubs his head and says, "I don't I don't know about that one. She seems to be she seems to have a serious uh, conversation going." Hmm. He seems pensive and scratches his chin with a small wing as he looks about. So Molly will look around. Is there any? Are there any uh, sisters who seem to be uh, unoccupied? Yes. <clears throat> Conveniently, Sister Chancenera. Conveniently. How oh, convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Molly will will approach her and she'll say, um, uh, "Hi." Good afternoon, my child. What can I do for you? Um. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of new to this whole thing, um, but, uh... She sort of, like, um, she, like, reaches out and, uh, takes, uh, gently, very gently, you, you know, uh, cups your arm a little bit, uh, and the woman says, well, welcome, welcome. We always enjoy having guests here at the, at the Temple of Mew at any time. <clears throat> Well, I, I came here with two friends. Uh, you you know you know Alicia and uh, Noir. 
Oh, yes. Dr. Pearl and Noir. Yes, I did not realize you were friends with them both. Well, Alicia, Alicia and I are actually uh, kind of in a relationship. But um, she's like, she's like blushing a little bit. She says, oh, that's wonderful, dear. Wonderful. She had never said anything about about that. <laughs> well, it's, it, it, it was a recent thing. I can understand. Oh, young love. <laughs> so, um, well, I I was just I was just wondering, um, uh, could you maybe give my Pokemon a blessing? And she gestures toward Bullet. Oh, of course. Yes, absolutely. My, you seem to have a very strong, and uh, you must seem to have very strong Pokemon. <laughs> Grins and puffs out his chest. And she she pats him on she pats his wing and she she says yeah he's he's gotten me out of out of uh, many many scraps. I like the crescent moon on his forehead too. The the symbol of a crescent moon is actually a very good omen. Oh, well I I could I could use a few good omens uh, uh, these days, but um. It, yes, if you're the superstitious type, it tends to give good luck. Hmm. I've never really thought about that kind of thing, but hey, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> well, let uh, let us uh, uh, see if we can give you you a bit of a blessing of Mew Mew uh, of Mew Bullet. Let's see. <laughs> um, so she uh, she will um, gently place her soft hands on Bullet's. Shoulder, sh- whatever constitutes as a shoulder for you, <laughs> and um, she will start uh, speaking um, very softly, and she says, um, "Oh Mew, if you would please um, come and share in your presence with us, I would like you for you to come down, reach out your nurturing and caring hands amongst Bullet here. Please watch over him." in the coming days and help him to be able to serve in your message of service and uh, service and nurturing to all beings. Um, and while she's talking, Bullet, you actually do feel this like really comforting warmth welling <laughs> up inside you. It's hard to explain, but it's it's weird, but it's pleasant. And um, and uh, as soon as uh, sh- she's done, uh, it, it it feels like you feel like this lingering, as if you know you're a baby who was just held by a mom um, who've just let you go. But for some reason, you could still you could still feel the <laughs> mom creating you even after you're aware that she's already let the baby go. It's like, oh yay! Okay. Well, there you go. I wish you both a wonderful holiday this evening. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I, I do have I do have a, a question, just a quick question for you. Of course. Uh, I I've never I've never been religious. I I never I don't know. I've never had time for it. I never really thought about it. Um, so, uh, what what did you mean when you said? Uh, all that stuff about nurturing and um, service and all of that. Well, the message of Mew calls to all of us to basically take care of each other and um, take care of ourselves. Love yourselves and love each other, basically, is the is the easiest way to bring up the message of Mew. Okay. Um... I see you grinning, Therese. I like that. That's clever. <laughs> Slip that in. <laughs> yeah. Molly looks thoughtful it's, about that. It sounds like a very simple message, but at times it can definitely be harder. Some days it's harder to do that than others. So, but um, as the followers of Mew, we strive to maintain that as much as possible, especially during the times when it is very hard to love ourselves and to love each other. I understand what that's like. Um, Do you have any advice? 
about about oh. following the message in general? Yeah, just just loving just loving myself and well, not necessarily loving other people, I guess. I, I seem to do okay with that, but and she glances back at Alicia. For many people, loving yourself actually comes a lot harder than loving your fellow man or woman. Yes. Um, she says, I find that um, when you reach my age, you start to recognize the more important things in life. And when you get to be my age, you start reflecting and looking back on yourself and the things that you have done. And I find that part of how you are able to find value in yourself is finding the value of what you do, what you decide to do each and every day. Our actions are what helps define us. It's not who, how we were born, who we were born from, what circumstances we were born from. The actions and the choices that we make is, defines who we are. And once you reach a certain point and you look back at yourself, quite often you don't really look back at who you are, but what you've done. And I believe that is what defines our value. So, for many people, they look back and they have many regrets of what they've done. And some people take those regrets and they just continue on the way they've always been going. And then there are others that are look at their regrets and they turn other around and make different choices and they make different actions. Um, and I think it is at that point that people truly start to find their value and their, their self-worth. Does that make sense? Um, it makes sense. It does. Um, it, it's just, you can, hearing it, hearing it feels, uh, hearing it is a lot easier than actually doing it. Yes. Yes, it is. And, um, for many people, I'm not suggesting it for you necessarily, but for many people, they find that the community helps them. Um, so we encourage people to come to the temple as often as they need, especially when they feel lost, because we all are trying to help each other and we're all trying to help one another to live by that message and to live by those ideals. So um, for many people, it helps for them to be within the community of, well, of the parish, I guess. But like I said, whatever works for Whatever works for each individual is what works for them. Okay, um, I'll give it some thought. Uh, I, I'm still trying to process all of this, but uh, being here with being here with Alicia and Noir definitely helped. Bullet will oh, give God. her a nudge. And Bullet, of course. <laughs> well, I'm very glad, she says, <laughs> and you're welcome anytime Anytime you wish, as often or not often as you wish. I did want to mention that our uh, holiday party, might I say, is one of the best in the city. So um, we have plenty of great food and music and, you know, we, we would love to have anyone in the community come in and share in the holidays. So that's something to look forward to if you're interested. Um, is, it, is it free food? Oh, yes, absolutely. She yes. She shoots a look at Bullet like free food. <laughs> so okay, um, well, I'll I'll see if Alicia wants to come. All right, um, well, thank you again. Um, I'll uh, maybe I'll see you some other time. I don't know. May the blessings of Mew smile upon you, my child. Uh, uh, right, right back at you. Um, I, I, I don't know what, <laughs> is there a, is there a phrase I'm supposed to say? The easiest, the easiest response for many is, and to you as well. Yeah, okay, um, and to you as well then. Thank <clears throat> you, dear. Thank you, my child. And she will smile and leave. Mm-hmm. Or that, <laughs> or that. Um, okay. 
you have you have a little bit of a break. So you you you're 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 just finishing up uh, Anne um, Chase's uh, work, um, and you're just going to take a little bit of a break. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you have to wait for the ink to set or whatever. I, mm-hmm. I'm not a tattoo artist, so I don't know. But maybe you have to wait a little bit. So now you can take a break, and if you want to give someone a call, you can. She's going to go into like a into out to out in back of the back of the parlor where there's sure. not very likely for people to listen in. Sure. And uh, she kind of looks down at the phone for a few moments, takes a deep breath, and goes into her contacts clicks on Nevi's number. Okay. Calls her. She picks up. Hey! Annie, what are, uh, to what do I owe this call? Well, um, uh, I know that I know that this question is has a really obvious answer, probably, and it's probably going to be really stupid, and you're probably going to laugh at me for asking. But okay. Do you hate me? Annie, what kind of question is that? I, I know it's a stupid question, but... I mean, you can be a pain in the butt sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, no, I don't hate you. Yeah. Uh... Where is this coming from? Hate. I don't know, I just... The question pops up into my mind a lot and it just festers in my head and it kind of blows everything out of proportion. You know me, I'm not exactly the most rational person. Okay. I just... I just needed to know that it's just the voices. It's just the voices, Annie. It's just the... I know it is. It's just... Yeah. It is. I mean... Anyway. How's life been for you? Yeah, so life's been really crazy. There's Hmm. been a lot going on. You remember, you remember my friend Cassie, right? Yeah. So, I guess one of the things I can say is things between her and I are, it's, it's a little complicated, but in a good way. Complicated in a good way. Good complicated. Good complicated. I understand good complicated. Yeah. We're not really sure... We haven't really defined it into anything specifically, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. This is so great. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For you. <laughs> well, don't get super excited. I mean, it's just, I mean, like I said, I don't know. It's it's complicated, but good complicated. I know good complicated plenty. <laughs> So, but yeah, I mean, life at the station's okay. Although I have started using some of my, like, actual linguistic stuff in the force a little bit. Um, the lieutenant's really cool. And, uh, yeah, there were some, there were some pretty scary things that also have been going on, but I don't know if I necessarily need to, to burden you with much of it. But, uh, you know, police stuff. Mm. I'm assuming you saw all the uh, craziness in the news about the Team Rocket base 
and out of character, you definitely know a lot about what happened at the Team Rocket base from uh, like yeah. out of character because of stuff going on with Charlie and Moxie. But anyway. Yeah. You weren't too mixed up in that, were you? Not too mixed up. Although the lieutenant, you know, had to deal with a lot of it, too. Mm. You probably saw him maybe on the on the on the TV with our mom. You're being smart about this stuff, right? Uh, I'm trying to be. I mean, I'm not as smart as Cassie is, but I try to be. You're the smart sister. You know that. Oh yeah, I know that. <laughs> she says without hesitation. <laughs> oh, I know that. Yeah. The smart one, the pretty one. Yep. Yep. You're the whole package. Well, I'm not as artistic as you. True. Hmm. That, um, and, I mean, that and I don't really have any of your, you know, gifts. Yeah. The gifts that the gifts that or that come with the whole crazy package. I, I always thought your gifts were cool, personally. Yeah. It's not the gifts I have a problem with. It's the it's the whole thing that's connected with the gifts. Yeah, you know, I can understand. How I stress out how it took me so long to actually have a normal conversation with people. You know that? I know, and I just, I don't know, I just never fully understand it. If I could do the things that you could do, man, I don't know. I think it'd be super cool. Part of me was actually, back in the day, really jealous that the first person who got to see your gifts in action was Cassie and not me. Yeah. Well... You kind of did, but you don't really remember, do you? Yeah, no, I don't. The whole night terror thing that plagued your terrible twos. Yeah, I kind of try to block that out. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah. But look, like I said, I personally would love to have your abilities. But... Apparently, you would care less. Well, they've... They've been useful for me as of late. Oh? I've been doing some... Action-y stuff. I mean... action -y stuff? To... I really? Mean, how come you get to have all the fun? Being the... Being a full police woman and I just... What? What did you expect me to do, sitting around twiddling my thumbs? So what kind of action-y stuff are we talking about? Hmm... Uh, let's see... Um... I did get mixed up in that whole shooting thing. Okay, yeah, I mean, I know you were in that mess. And and yeah, I'm... that was scary. And I... And my shot. And my aura self was running around, shielding people, getting people, uh, getting people to safety, and all that. Oh, look at you, my sister, playing superhero. All right, well, that actually is kind of cool. Yeah, I've always wanted to be a superhero. Well. I don't think, uh, I feel like you've got some potential there, and I mean, I, I, I suck as a, co as a cop, so I don't think I'm really on the road to being a superhero anytime soon. Oh, come on, you've got, well, at least you've got the whole fairy tale princess thing under your belt. With the whole talking to, talking to Pokemon thing. Okay, I'm not a princess, <laughs> first of all. I'm no princess. But, talking to Pokemon has definitely been useful, sure. Mm. But I mean, you can project yourself and be in two places at the same time. 
Yeah, I can, but... You're a better force of good, you know. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't think Cassie would agree with that either. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I just put you up on a pedestal sometimes. You're your own person, sis. Yeah. You can't, own... shouldn't be comparing yourself to anybody else. Arcee's knows our mom does enough of that, comparing people, so... Yeah. Anyway, okay. I gotta go, so do you... Yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, do you think I'm like her? Like mom? <laughs> no. No. No? Why? I... Do you want to be like her? No, the opposite. I mean, I don't... I don't want Charlie to end up with a... stuck with a mom clone. I don't think you're... I don't think you're very much like our mom, no. Yeah. I don't think I'm much like our mom. Feels like it sometimes. When I look in the mirror, I just... So what have... Why? What have you done that's remotely like her mom? I mean... Did I ever tell you that much about the... the... drug thing at the academy? little bits I think something about something about coal and how you that's why you took coal out because stuff got really I don't know yeah that but there was also a human drug thing a human drug thing yeah no I didn't know about that uh, a couple of my friends were distributing drugs for and, humans yeah painkillers Cigarettes. Yeah, that's like not legal. You realize yeah. you're talking to a sister cop right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't talk to them anymore, you understand. <laughs> I, just... I was roped into all of that stuff and I did nothing. Just because I didn't want to lose them as my friends. Are you going to do anything about it now? I'm going to try and make up for it. If shady stuff is going down at that school, I mean, I know you know how much mom loves that school, but if that school needs to get shut down, That's all I'm saying. Yeah. They'll get what's coming to them eventually. But I'll leave you to your stuff. Okay. To your police stuff. Alright. Well, have a happy All Hallows Eve. Happy All Hallows Eve. I love you. Love you too. Alright. Bye. See ya. She hangs, hangs up. up. What's happening, Steven and Cassie? I mean, so first, what was Steven doing like while they were talking? Is he just chilling out there? He was waiting. He was waiting. Okay. okay. Um, then, you know, yeah, when she was finished with her talk with Aspen, uh, she'd leave his office and just leave the door open because that's how he had it. I mean, I guess yeah. actually she'd ask, did he have a preference? You can leave it. You can leave it open. Okay, she'll leave Aspen it open. Aspen normally has an open door policy, so. Cool. Yeah, she'll leave it open and she'll say, "All right, Stephen, let's get going. I'll show you around just the basic area, and then we can get into more of what you're here to do." Okay, show me the way. Now, out of character, 
with what Steven knows of her, would you say he feels more like connected and open to Cassie or more like guarded? Mm, Steven's a bit of in the between right now. He doesn't know if he should tell you some things, but he wants to tell you, but he isn't sure. Okay, so I'm trying to judge whether he would be like a willing participant to maybe more intimate conversations. Mm, enough talking, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think for the sake of showing some, I may have to just force. Let's see. Um, and you can just tell me if it doesn't work. But yeah, so they'll start to walk, and she'll, like, as they do, you know, she'll briefly set his hand or set her hand on his shoulder. Um, and then, if possible, he will hear her voice in his head. But that's up to you. Because of an ability you have? Yes. But it's only that with ability? a willing. It's only with a willing participant. Okay. So, uh, so I, I I think the participant is aware then that you're trying to send a message across somehow. I think I think he could get the feeling. Yeah. All and right. Just block it out entirely or not. Well, uh, actually, actually, I can. I I have a skill that lets me know if someone is trying to contact me through my brain. Iron mind. Yep. Okay. So you're at least aware, but if you want to suppress it, you can suppress it, or not. It's up to you. So you're aware that it seems like Cassie's trying to send a message to you somehow, supernaturally. Okay, Steven is a little surprised, but he lets it through. <laughs> All right, then the message is simply, what do you think about Darkrai? Well... Oh... <laughs> that's an oh. interesting question. Do you say that out loud or in your head? In my head. In his head, okay. <laughs> well, um, she, for, you know, the first while, will just wait. Is he eventually going to say more, or...? Well, uh, well, I know of Darkrai, and I know what people think about him. But I think most people might misunderstand him. Fair enough. She will think back. Are you at all connected to the people who are at the rocket base? Hmm. What are these questions? Important ones, I think, in order to keep everyone as safe as possible. What do you know about people there? Not much, admittedly. I think that they were there for a good reason, though. And from what I can tell of you, you seem like a good guy with good intentions. I just want to be sure. Hmm. I might know some people who were there. How well would you say you know them? Mm. We are pretty new. Not really a long time. So you are a group then? Like me and my friends? If I... Mm, maybe. Are you being coy with me, or do you not know? What do you think? <laughs> I think you're trying very hard to dodge these questions, and I don't necessarily blame you, but I like to think that we're on the same side. And if we're not, then I need to be aware of that too. So what do you think? I, think... I mean, are we allies I in we this? I think we are. At least I hope so. What is it that you guys are trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? I never did learn why your two friends were at the rocket base. I think if they didn't tell you, I think I shouldn't tell you either. Did we not just establish that we're friends? 
We just met. All right, you don't have to tell me anything, but if we're working toward a common goal, I feel like this is very counterintuitive. And you seem like a smart guy, so I imagine you would have to agree. Things are complicated. Yes, they are. Wouldn't it be nice if between the two of us we could help simplify things a little bit? I can't tell you what they were doing, but I think I have information you would like to know. What would that be? Your father. <laughs> yes, physically, she tenses a little, but doesn't say anything out loud, you know. Um, and in his thoughts, he'll just hear, go on. You seem to know about my ability already. Do you but know what I can do? I don't know the extent of it. I know the basis. I know it involves visions. Yes. I have nightmares. And those nightmares sometimes come true. But you said this was about my father. I had a vision of your father. When? It was three years ago. I, Stephen goes to his bag, goes to pages and gives you the book with the date on the date of the vision, what he saw, and gives it to you. This is what I saw. And so, with her reading that, what is it she would learn? Yeah, she would learn that Stephen was seen to a person who was promoting to papers. Stephen didn't know why he was here, who he was, or what he was doing. He would know about finding some papers and taking pictures of them. And then there would be that skirmish between them and the injection. Also, the going home, he leaving through the window and was getting away. After that, there would be a little bit of... And after that space, there would be uh, information about the explosion. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so upon reading that, um, you know, her brow furrows a bit as she's continuing down. Um, but then, you know, without taking her eyes from the pages, you know, he'll hear in his head again. And when you have these visions, you don't have anything to do with them? No. And there's nothing you can do to stop them? I have learned that I can stop them, but at the time... That was three years ago. I didn't know about my abilities at all. And out of character, Ronik, for the last few months, you have been able to stop your nightmare. Like, the, your nightmares from coming true. You have succeeded in it since then. So you know it's possible. Does he say anything to that effect, or does... Yeah, I have been able to stop them now, but... Stop them so... now? Yeah. I didn't know about this at all, what was going on back then. Um, she'll, she'll nod a little and then ask, did you have a dream about the Team Rocket base? Yes. So that's how you knew to show up there? Or your friends, at least. Yes. See, how it works with our group is when we go to sleep, we all appear, essentially, in the same realm of existence. And there are doors, and behind each door is just a brief scene. 
And sometimes they make no sense to us until later on. And sometimes we immediately have an idea of what it might be that's happening, you know? Hmm. That's how we have an idea of where we should go next, what we should do. Is your whole group relying on your visions? Or do you have doors like this as well? It's my visions. We don't have any doors. So you are a very important part of your group. I guess I am. I don't really feel like it. You tell me that you can see disasters and have the power to stop them, and you don't feel like you're important. I have been able to stop them just for a few months. Well, Before that's more that, than a lot of people can do. Yeah, but my whole life I have seen them. And I'm when I'm able to stop them. Well, what's the most recent one you've seen? Zombies. Come again? You hurt me. I did, I'm just not inclined to believe in that sort of thing. Yeah. That's the weird thing. Sometimes those wizards are just so out there. You really don't understand them. Okay, so zombies then. Are we talking humans or are we talking Pokemon? I'm like it was Pokemon. Mm -hmm. You haven't seen any human zombies, only Pokemon zombies in your vision. And all the corpses right. that you saw on the ground were were of humans, and the humans were not coming back to life. Hmm. Seemed like it was only Pokemon. All right. So according to your vision, uh, how did it start? What, what do you do to stop it? Not sure, but I know. It was called a P-Virus. The Pokerus? That's what we are... I'm... It's related to that. Alright. Well, have you guys made any leads? One person was claimed to be responsible for it. It's... We don't know the name of the person. Do you know what you're going to do about it? We are trying to stop the distribution, distribution of the broken workers. To help you out, Stephen, and I don't know if this is going to matter in your conversation, we're going to assume yeah. that you described as vividly as you could the description of the individual of the person in the newspaper, and that Annie, being an artist, was able to sketch something out based on your description. You have that sketch with you. Or you maybe even have scanned the sketch and it's on your laptop if you have a laptop. So so you do have possession of a sketch if you need that for this conversation. I think I can show you. Can I have my book back, please? <laughs> yeah, of course. And she'll close it and hand it back to him. Open it and scan to the latest page and okay. with their page and it's, picture. Yeah, it's a penciled it's spent it's penciled sketch and it's penciled like some colored pencils were shading in. And <laughs> as soon as you see it from the red hair, spot on that is Jefferson Constant. Spot on. Okay. <laughs> Rella perk a bit of that and she'll, you know, look at Steve and say, uh, do you mind if I take a picture of this? Sure, go ahead. Then yeah, so she'll, she'll pull out her phone and do that. And Cassie tells no. <laughs> <laughs> she'll pull out her phone and take a picture then of Jefferson. Um, or of the picture, rather. And, you know, nod and thanks for putting her phone away. All right. Um, well, if you guys want any help, as I feel that's what we should be doing at this point in time, she will think to him. If you haven't yet, I would consider looking into the academy near Victory Road. From what I know, that place has a connection to the Pokerus. 
You don't say. <laughs> Do you know something? Maybe. Yeah, I was open with you, wasn't I? Uh, let's just say I have scoped the place out. Okay, on that note, what are your intentions here? At the lab, I mean. Work. This is a legitimate job opportunity for you, then? Well, yes. I... Well, been... I have had work with really interesting places, and I have been said that I have talent with technology, and so I thought it would be a good place to try. I don't doubt that you have talent, I'm just wondering if this is something that I should be aware of. Are you scoping this place out? Were there any visions to do with it? Or is this just a job? Just a job. All right. Good. I believe you. Thank something you. else I need to ask, at least. You yes. think you and your group, you're doing good, and I believe that you believe that. But what specifically are you doing? Nothing. No, or no, and give it even, even doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't answer at all. Oh, okay. He doesn't say nothing. There is just nothing. Yeah. All right, then she'll, yeah, clarify and continue with. Were you given any particular task? I'll tell you ours. Sorry. I can't. Did it have to do with the Arceus plates? Why? Because that was our job. Hmm. So, are we both after the same thing? No, we are not. Perfect. Then in that case, what information do you have on the Arceus plates? Hmm. I know two places of where two of them are. Where? I tell you later. Right now I have other things I have to do. Sweetheart, I'm giving you a tour right now. <laughs> yeah. I have also other business to do. Well, you haven't even seen the computer systems yet. It'd be a shame if I had to go back to Aspen and tell him that you left early. Oh, I'm not leaving yet. <laughs> so you're still under my care? Yes. But I can tell you, I think telling about those location of those plates, I'm still not sure if I should tell you. I have to think about it. All right, Steven, but just know that I really do want to be friends with you guys. As do I. All right. I'll give you some time, but we'll need to know where those plates are. If you have to tell me later, so be it, but I do need to know. Okay that I can do. Okay. Well, your time. Any questions? Hmm. How's my sister? Your sister's doing really well, actually. I don't know if you know this, but she met a good person lately. Hmm. And, uh, things are going well for them. Hmm. Oh, I meet, meet her someday. Strange. I don't think I ever gave a gender. I know, my sister. <laughs> yes, you said you two were very close. Well, yeah. So look See at that. You. 
It's another connection yeah. that we have. So many connections everywhere. <laughs> and I see connections everywhere. All right, is that all? Hmm. For now, yes. Then for now, I'll actually show you around properly. Good. Chase, I would like for you to roll me a d100. And then... <laughs> um, Is that about infections? Yep. It might be about infections, yes. Let's have two healers! What if they've even told you about one. steroids? He rolled <laughs> one out of 100. How do you roll one out of 100? <laughs> Like that. And Chase is wow. dead. Chase is dead. <laughs> what That's a way to go. Not good at all. Chase is a tick of hit points. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Good to know. So, um, Tiffany, you have managed to create a, a ridiculously amazing costume for oh, Cynthia. Geez. And she looks like she could easily like sneak her way into a club and would get carded. <laughs> My goal. Takes picture, sends to Cassie. Are you oh, coming okay. with us or not? <laughs> Cassie, you get a, Im a image from from uh, <laughs> Tiffany. It's an image you never thought you would ever see in your life. <laughs> any rate, it's very, it's very scandalous, the image of your mom in this costume. Okay. So Cassie will text back like, good God, what have you done with her? She looks like Aww. like that one woman on the tattoo parlor. That just calls you at this point. <laughs> <laughs> She'll grudgingly answers. What do you want, <laughs> Tiffany? She saw the picture and that's what she wanted. What do you mean she... Why were you letting her look at those things? Let's get a tattoo today. It's been Sorry, a busy what? day. We went and saw Chase get a tattoo today. Well, I actually ran away to the fabric store and past the tattoo parlor, looked in, and whoa, there's a topless Chase. Let's go say hi. Oh, you and we met not... the girl named Danny, who is related to your, is the sister of your girlfriend, shall we say? Is it safe to say your girlfriend? It's complicated. Um, sorry, really quick, you did not let her get a tattoo, did you? Aww. No, she didn't ask for one, but she looked like she was thinking about it. No, that is not allowed until she's no longer brainwashed and can make rational decisions. I agree. Okay, Still, thank you. What you know what's after the fact? We're going together. We'll make this a day. I'm not interested, thank you, but okay, yes, you small world. So, Nevi has a sister named Anne? Yes, no? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, we're years older. the ink on Chase. So that's what she's doing. Yeah, you didn't know? Or just not that close to the sister? I don't keep in touch much with the Kearneys in general, you know? It's really just been Nevi all these years. Okay. So are you coming tonight? Do I need to bring glitter to make you sparkly if you're a vamp? Oh, did she tell you I was a vampire? Yep. For the record, I vampires don't sparkle. Yes, they do. I've read Twilight. Exactly. That's the problem. Has you Cassie would. changed her mind? Is she going to join us for trick-or-treating? Yes, Cassie, are you going to join us for trick-or-treating? Your mom is going to have so much fun. <laughs> All right, Come you on, guys are lucky you. that my evening is cleared up. I can stop by, if nothing else, to make sure you don't let her do anything else like this. <laughs> oh, come on! It's fun! It's not fun. Let's see you do that with your mom. Pauses. That's not funny. Well, neither is this, frankly. All right, um, where are we meeting? Uh, just me at my apartment, we'll head over. It's only like about three blocks, so it's within walking distance. Okay. Uh, Unless so you want your mom in a pillowy skirt that's not that long to begin with on my Vespa, because... No? Unless you want to put on a certain kind of show. I'll be there as soon as I can. All right, you better. Bring mm -hmm. Nevi on. What? I, she's probably busy or something. Call 
ever, honestly. All right. I'm just going to remind you that we're adults and this is trick-or-treating. Yes. Adult fun trick-or-treating. That's not oh, a thing. Oh, I don't like more citrus I could put you in. I could no. wait out your skin. All right. I'll talk to you later, <laughs> Tiffany. Oh, Cassie will let me dress her up pretty. And she'll hang up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chase, uh, are you, you're still hanging out with them tonight as well, trick-or-treating, correct? Yes, yeah. So we'll say that you arrive at Tiffany's apartment, and um, are you going to knock on the door or anything? Like, Yes. You'll knock on the door, and then Cynthia will say, I'll get it! She'll, she'll run up to the door, and then she'll um, open it up, and there is an extremely sexy, extremely sexy Blossom greeting you at the door. Oh, Chase! Hey, Tiffany, when did you uh, run into this young teenager? We bring us some new people out of the town? <laughs> oh, Chase? It's me! It's Cynthia! Uh, you are completely unrecognizable. I know! Oh, well, well, thank you. I you look younger than Cassie. A... I know! Oh, stop it! Oh, no. You're, I, you're making me blush, Chase. Thank you. Well, I hope that I look um, nice enough to go out. Tiffany, I thought you did a very oh, good job. <laughs> I need to finish <laughs> getting dressed. <laughs> Are you, hungry? Hungry. are you hungry, Chase? I'm always hungry. Are you, are you, are you making some food? Pancakes? Oh, yeah. Well, I just made something for us uh, just before we go head out. If you, if you would like to, to have um, some. She was made. I just made some of my, um, some of my uh, meatloaf. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I would love to. Oh, well, well, come on, she says. And she takes a hold of your arm and she'll... She'll escort you into the kitchen, and you immediately like smell this amazing savory scent of like onions and garlic and parsley and all that good stuff. And there's this big giant um, meatloaf uh, at the table with like different sauces, and um, you know she'll she'll pull up a chair and say, "Here, have here, Chase. Go ahead and, and uh, go ahead and have something to eat. We have a lot of trick or treating to do tonight." I'm looking forward to it. And he, she starts digging in. <laughs> yes. She'll, she'll, uh, she'll, she'll just watch you and she'll, you know, slice herself a bit. And then, of course, you know, the way she's slicing it, you know, she's bending over and it's very strategically, strategically placed when she's bending over to slice this thing before she puts it on a plate. Um, she, Mama, Pop, Mama Pine looks good. She looks very good. <laughs> Dad, yes? And then he starts eating again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tiffany will get her into costume, get herself into her prince garb, who is, of course, the pretty princess. Takes out sure, takes one of them together, takes one by herself, looks at it, thinks about it for a second. Real quick text to Kyle. Hard to believe I can go looking like this. Picture of her in the lawn get up, very low-cut cleavage. To this. Picture of the prince. Sends. He texts back, wow, impressive. You look absolutely dot 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 dashing, question mark. <laughs> aw, text back, aw, thank you. Then puts phone away and goes rejoins the party. <laughs> well, he'll continue the text and he'll say, he'll say, gotta work late tonight, but have fun with the Halloween festivities. All Hallows Eve tends to be the busiest night of the year for the police force. Mm -hmm. Oh, Nevi then. Text back. Take care. I will be chase sitting. Send. <laughs> um, meanwhile, Noir, you're going to come home and um, you will have taken um, Fabian back. And Fabian, as soon as you get back home, he like rushes into his room and you can hear him like putting on. It's, it sounds like he's putting on a costume. Yeah. Um, Fabian comes out and did we talk about what his costume was going to be or did we not decide it was that clues, yet? Basically. Yeah, he wanted to dress up as, as, as clues. Basically, I imagine it's like one of those really cheap Walmart ones, but then like Noir's like edited it and like 
dyed it blue and made it look like it. He, he puts it on and says, come on, Clues, we're going to trick-or-treating. We're going trick-or-treating, he says. He's putting on the costume backwards, but he's putting it on. <laughs> I'll go get my costume. <laughs> okay. Goes off and she asks Remy if, she wants, if he wants to come. He'll, he'll come along. <laughs> okay. Do you like a costume or are you just going to go as is? What's a costume? Ooh. Okay. I got a little hat. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> it's like what a kind of a hat, hat is it? A witch's hat? Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that yeah. is and really cute. I was cute. Like, dressed up as like a um, witch type thing, like black and very classic. Oh, that's that's Some like old one. clothes from like um, op shops and stuff and it's just packed at it. It's, it's, it's not, not a very nice job, but it's like it's like a cute witch costume, <laughs> not a sexy witch costume. <laughs> He likes it. He'll he'll wear it. Okay. Um, Fabian's excited. He's ready to go. And Clues is you know f flying, um, hovering next to him. <sighs> Let's get some candy. Yep. And while telekinetically brings a broom to her hand. Let's go. All right. You're gonna go out. Molly, what are you doing this evening around five o'clock ish? Five o'clock ish this evening. Just out of curiosity. <clears throat> I think she's, <clears throat> I think she's uh, finishing up work. Probably gonna uh, call up, call up Alicia. And just ask her what her plans are. Um, she picks up and says, "Hey, Molly, are you ready um, to do something later tonight?" Yeah, it's All Hallows Eve. Um, I have a few things that I need to wrap up here. Uh, but I should be free around 11 o'clock or so, which is actually perfect because I think that the Clefairies don't actually start their rituals until around midnight. Well, all right, perfect. Uh, do you have a costume? I do. Um, it's a little old, though, so I'm hoping it still fits. Uh, what are you dressing up as? Uh, actually, I'm, I'm thinking of going as an Umbreon. Oh, that's so cute, she says. Uh, I have, I actually have um, a costume, but it's a little bulky. It's actually a, 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 a cloister costume. It's a bit, but uh, it's a bit bulky. So I don't know if that would be appropriate for where we're going. Hmm. Well, um, you know, my, my Umbreon costume came... Uh, like there was, they were having a two for one deal, and I just had to buy another. I just had to choose another one. Um, oh, yeah, it's actually a Glaceon. Oh, that sounds that sounds like a really uh, pretty costume. I could maybe try it and see if it if it fits. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, I could I could bring it over and we can see. Okay. Well, why don't I tell? Why don't I do this? I'll call you around eleven o'clock and. We'll meet up and see if we can do a fitting and then maybe get to the Mount Moon by midnight. All right, perfect. See you tonight, okay? See you tonight. Steven, your phone rings. Okay. Hello? Hi, handsome. It's me, hey, Madison. Everybody's... Well, hey. Well, I was just wondering what your plans were tonight. It's All Hallows Eve. I really got nothing going on. I was wondering what's going on with you. Out of character, what is the, when is that burn hour plan is going to happen? Or is it, is it this one? Um, so, okay, to give you a little bit of context, you guys have a lead as to who this guy is. And so the idea is you're planning on investigating that lead um, that evening, which actually is perfect timing because everybody's out and about for Halloween anyway. So that is the plan, at least, for you to be trick-or-treating, but you're actually investigating the lead. I think I'm free. I was planning on going, going around today. Oh, well, I could, I could fly over there. If you want to do something tonight. Well, 
Yeah, of course. That would be great. Is it just going to be us or are your friends going to be there too? I think some of my friends might be there too. She said, oh, it sounds like fun. Yeah, we'll all hang out. Molly seems to be uh, having the plans of her own, so... Yeah, really. What kind of plans do you know? Oh, well, between you and me, so her and uh, uh, your sister seem to be getting real friendly. Really? So oh, she's... Yeah. Oh, she's the one she's was talking, talking about. Have your sister not mentioned her yet? No, she's not mentioned it yet. I haven't talked to her in a few days. But I have known that she had someone she was interested in. Well, I think it's absolutely cute. Hopefully you approve. She's a good girl, Molly is. Yeah, I... I think I'm... If I ever meet her, I don't think I have anything against that. Well, well, um, maybe one of these we could all go out for something. I don't know. That might be really nice. Hmm. Yes, that would be nice. All right. Well, Steven, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go get ready. And uh, do you want to just meet somewhere? Uh, tell me where you want to meet. Well, I can give you the address where I'm staying right now. We can meet him here. All right. I'll talk to you very soon. Yep. Waiting, looking forward to it. Me too. All right. See ya, Steven. So she hangs up. Yeah, she's actually she's actually gonna come home and like just sure chill for a little while. Oh, hey, Molly. You can see that Madison is actually uh, getting into costume right now. <clears throat> Oh, hey, Maddie. Happy, happy Hallow's Eve. Happy All Hallow's Eve to you. Do you have any plans tonight with uh, a certain doctor? I might have some plans. So, what about you? I see you're getting dressed. I am. How do I look, she says. And she's dressed up as a uh, f uh, feminine frost lass. Mm. Uh, I found it uh, in the shop the other day and I thought that it actually would fit me really well. So, what do you think? Wow, it looks it looks really nice on you, actually. It's very soft and I, I like these two little jewels, because if you look at Frostlass's picture, he has these ice jewels. Yeah. Like, on the top of his head. And then the, the sleeves have, like, wing-like things, because Frostlass has, like... The, yeah. If you, again, yeah, that thing. So um, it looks, it looks, it's very flowy. And uh, she says, "I think I, I think it definitely uh, is very cute." So I'm gonna go ahead and out and see Stephen tonight. You've heard me talk about Stephen before. Stephen, um, you know, Doc, Doctor Pearl's brother. Oh, I didn't realize he was in town. I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, rent uh, rent a bird to fly me over there. <laughs> All right. Well, what are your what are your plans with Stephen tonight? Uh, we're gonna hang out with some of his friends. All right. Well, sounds like a fun night. I think. Hope so. Maybe a bunch of us will get into trouble, but not too much trouble. Stephen's a good. He's a good guy. Well, if he's if he's Alicia's brother, I'm sure he is. Well, um, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna, she, she pulls out the Umbreon costume and she lays it out. She says, so what do you think? I got it online. Oh, I love it. Umbreon, such a beautiful Pokemon. I think it'll suit you very well, especially with all the golden rings. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> Molly's playing, playing with her <laughs> ring finger and she's like, no, 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 too early for that. <clears throat> And uh, Molly, Molly, she goes to the table. She she sits down her bag and she opens it up and she says, 
Oh, Maddie, before I forget, Nora actually wanted me to give you this. Oh, yeah, she actually sent me an email. <clears throat> oh, it smells really good, she says, and she opens it up. And it's, remind me again what it is, what the delivery is. It's a, isn't it a um, bread or something, or cake? Ella? It is a Rocky Road slice. Yes. Um, it's gluten-free because I remember the pizza joint, she said that gluten-free was important for her. Okay. It's also milk take free because you know, I was intolerant to that. <clears throat> Otherwise you can taste test it. I haven't responded yet to her email, but I did read it. I'm trying to decide what to write back. <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I hope you can, I hope you can give her a chance, Maddie. I mean, you know, uh, her, her Remy, he got really messed up after the PC stuff and she's, she's, uh, she's felt really bad about that yeah, whole thing. Yeah, I know. I'm still, I'm still processing it. It's, it's one of my flaws. Dr. Pearl and I have been working on it. I have a really hard time with grudges and stuff. It's really difficult for me to let things go after somebody screwed me over, regardless of whether or not it was intentional or not. It's just, I, it's just something really hard for me. I understand, but, well, um, she's, she's, she's trying her best and I think we're all just trying our best, right? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, I got more than two, more than a second chance, so I'll think about it. I'm sure I'll respond to it eventually. I just can't do it now. Well, take all the time you need. Just um, yeah, give give it a try. She's she's very good at cooking. I can definitely smell it from here. I'll definitely have a few pieces. Maybe Steven would like some, too. Yeah, why not? I was never really a great cook, so he might appreciate this more than anything I could come up with. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, I make, not to brag, Maddie, but I make the best bowl of cereal. <laughs> That's true, especially now that you've been getting the expensive kind again. Uh, Frosted Flakes. Uh, the the price of having house guests. Such a luxury, I know. 